Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today, I want to kind of give you guys the last update to my RF Inquisitor before we hit 100, and then I'll probably make another video going on overall thoughts, but it'll probably be delayed for a little bit since we've got SSF coming in. Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about the character, the progression, I've changed a few things, and then more so we're going to talk about tattoos, and uh, I want to call them budget interactions, but unfortunately, they're probably not going to be budget once the video goes live so you know do your best to snipe them whenever you can uh, all right so let's talk about it so one of the the newest things I've added into the build and for people curious about the Atlas it's on the previous video uh, I'm using a replica dragon fang now replica dragon fang I bought this when it was four divines uh, yesterday and it went up as high as 20 divines uh, so let's talk about that a little bit now, Replica Dragon Fang is a new uh, unique that's been added that can basically roll any plus skill. It's kind of similar to Ashes of the Stars in that sense because it rolls Mana Reservation Efficiency. It's on a good base, which is the Onyx Amulet. Uh, and in this instance, in my opinion, it is was a good budget amulet for RF players who wanted uh, some more clear but didn't want to craft the crazy amulet. Now, in terms of how this compares to Ashes, it's a little tricky to say. Overall, I'd say Ashes might potentially be better because it's a bit more well-rounded. You get some fire trap damage and you get some RF damage, right? Gets to scale your like uh, your shield charge, which gives you more attack speed. So overall, Ashes has it's probably better, but overall, the better amulet of the two, especially if you're going to spend like 20 divines on an amulet, would be a crafted plus one plus one ami, which is similar to kind of like the dagger craft that we have. A lot more nitty-gritty endgame stuff. We don't need to spend too much time talking about it. Other than that, one of the other interactions that I have added is I went ahead and bought myself a Maven Jewel for about 70 chaos. So the Maven Jewel that I'm referring to um, is called Impossible Escape, and I grabbed it on Avatar of Fire. If I check with POB right now, uh, it says they're around 70 chaos to 1.5 divine, so it seems that the price is already going up on them. But it's still pretty cheap, in my opinion, for what it provides. And that's what we'll be talking about here in just a minute, once we finish up this map. Yeah, overall, I'd say I'm pretty happy. The skill tree is very similar to the original skill tree. I'd say the only thing that's different is the cluster jewel. I get a lot of questions on the cluster jewel, and they're honestly a little tricky to answer because... Our cluster jewels for Righteous Fire builds aren't really that strong. The main use of them is providing, for example, uh, the ability to get an extra jewel out of it. So when you're looking at Forbidden Flesh and Flame, Watcher's Eyes, Impossible Escape, that's kind of when the cluster jewels really sort of pop off. So if I go ahead and just open the tree here to talk about it, and I think I've talked about this in the previous videos, here has a very budget cluster jewel option. And when I say budget, I mean, I bought this large passive 12 fire for literally like, I don't know, 10 chaos and maybe spent 15 chaos in terms of alt rolling and exalt slamming to get this, which gives like good life, good ES, good chaos res and a tiny bit of chaos, or, uh, cold res. So this is just a very budget uh, option. A more damage focused one would definitely have like increased effect plus increased damage or you just go with the eight passive which is potentially better where you go eight passive get two good notables in the front uh, and then you can branch off into another medium i definitely prefer the double medium because you could get two flows of life so that's really good and then on this one here i've got the wrapped in flames fan the flames this is just because i want to map faster so i'm not affected by chill and Fam the Flames is strictly for the explode setup that I'm doing. You'll notice that there's a bit more explosions in this setup, and that's primarily because of the Oriats. Um, strictly for clear speed, right? So the Herald of Ash, the explode tattoos, and the Oriats end only for clear speed. If you want more single target, you know, swap your Herald of Ash to Skitterbot. Um, is if you can fit in Skitterbot, you can fit in Herald of Ash because the reservation Skitterbot's a little higher, so you'll notice my MP. Anyway, let's talk about this interaction we were talking about. So, what I did is um, I dropped the two points here on regen, right? So these two life regen nodes are dropped, so that's 1.2% gone. With those two nodes, I came up here and went into Ellie damage. I then uh, don't remember exactly what I dropped. You can kind of look at the tree here, right? Um, then I went into the impossible escape. And that allowed me to grab, I think I maybe dropped like a baby node here and maybe like a life node. Um, that allowed me to grab Arsonist, 
which is really good because you make that regen back that you lost, literally, but then you also get fire multi. This is an optional point. It's just really good because it's like 0.4% life regen, right? Um, with some fire damage. And then what's really nice about this interaction is you can actually now grab an intelligence uh, gem area without having to spend extra points. So normally we would have to say, well, really the best int one for us would be here, but I don't go over here in the melding of the flesh setup. So this allowed us to secure essentially a plus one int. Now, if you don't want to do this, you absolutely do not have to do this, right? Um, you could just like take the fire trap one or in the melding of the flesh setup, you could just take the max cold res frenzy charge. That's also not too bad. Um, my max res is still the same at 87. I could very easily boost it. I just have to spend some currency. I can elevate the plus one max cold res to two and that immediately gets me 88. I could elevate the max cold res here and then that would be 89 and then switching that to two would be 90. There might be a couple of other ways, but I mean, the character's not really dying. It's a very tanky, right? So I figure I'm just gonna play it out and kind of just hit level 100. Um, here is the dagger we crafted. This is the end game dagger. A lot of people ask, why do you craft an end game dagger over say a scepter? Um, to explain this simply, Daggers cannot naturally roll fire damage. So that percent fire damage there, because it cannot naturally roll, you can guarantee the plus one fire. So with this deterministic method of crafting, there is a slight chance of failure, but when you are gonna spend a, kind of like a large amount of currency on a weapon, maybe in the like 10 to 20 divine range, the dagger would be the optimal choice and you can figure out how to craft this on my Wikipedia. I just have to actually do LE damage equals, uh, quality. you know, actually, can I do that right now? Oh. Nice, there we go, yeah. I get some LE damage too. <clears throat> right, uh, oh, other than that, nothing in the gear has changed. Uh, a lot of people ask about, like, the Righteous Fire AoE here. Um, majority of the AoE is coming from the fact that my RF is level 32. So, not to mention, I do also have the big ink AoE on it. So, if I click the RF, it's 124 at level 32. So uh, if you look at my gear, you'll understand where all of the levels are coming from. He gets plus one from the helmet, could be plus two. So that's plus one there. Six from global modifiers. So this is plus three. Um, this is plus one and plus one. And then the int tattoo is another plus one. So that's six. And then it gets another four from support gems. So that would be the empower four, um, along with the awakened elemental focus. Another big question that people ask is, when do I switch my RF to my helmet versus the body armor? A lot of people seem to think it's based off the mods on your helmet, and I don't agree with this. Um, what I personally like to do is, if you'll notice when looking in the POB, we like to run Righteous Fire with our Awakened Gems being Awakened Burning Damage and Awakened Ellie Focus, right? So this is like a big core part of leveling your gems. We also, I like to grab Awakened Swift Affliction, right? And then you have your other gems, which it doesn't really matter. You have like Awakening KOE, but these are the important ones. So when I have RF in my body armor and I ding a level five burn and I ding a level five Ellie focus, that is when I make the switch. Why? I make the switch then because here's what you do. You take the awakened burn and you give it to your fire trap. The reason you give it to your fire trap is there's a 95% chance you have uh, burning damage on your helmet, right? So because you have burning damage on your helmet, you don't want to give the burn to your RF. Number two, um, you can keep the Ellie Focus because you never get Ellie Focus on a helmet. So that secures your Righteous Fire, right? With your Ellie Focus. The Awakened Swift Affliction can either stay in the RF setup or it can move to the Fire Trap setup. It's not a super big deal. Um, the more expensive, bigger AoE is Awakened Ink AoE and Empower 4. The only time I'd ever tell you to rush this setup because it's very expensive is if your helmet has Conk Effect because then you can try to offset some of the AOE loss with these two, right? And then your fire trap setup is pretty self-explanatory, right? You've got the Awakened Burn because you get plus one fire. You've got the Awakened Swift Affliction. You've got the Empower Four. I think you could potentially drop Empower Four for like combustion or efficacy. It'll make it a lot easier to color. You'll probably lose a bit of damage though. Um, then you've got your fire trap, your life tap, and your trap in mine. Okay, that's pretty much done. Uh, do know that on my website, just to cover for people who are unaware. We get people every day who are unaware of it, so I try to plug it as much as possible. Over here, if you click the crafting question, or a little section, and you click the end game rune dagger, this is the dagger 
that we crafted, right? It's the one I'm using right now. Um, and then for the FAQ, I was talking about the RF, right? So, I think I could do Link, maybe? Why do people put RF in helmet? This is pretty much the uh, setup here. This is what I was explaining. And then, what is your six link RF and fire trap setup? You can kind of like see that here. All right, so now that that is pretty much finished, let's talk about tattoos. So, I believe this is the most accurate thing. It's the Pee Wee Wiki, you never want to use the fandom. Uh, and they've got pretty much all the tattoos. So what I'm gonna do is go through literally every tattoo. We're gonna zoom through it, speed through it, and I'm gonna talk about like every one that could be usable. Unfortunately, I cannot make the best tattoo like thing for you guys because a lot of this is flexible. Not everyone's gonna have the same attribute requirements. Not everyone's gonna want the same needs. So I personally think it's much better to just talk about it and then you guys can apply it. So this one right here replaces a 30 dex node, uh, grants one max cold rise and one max frenzy. This is pretty good, uh, specifically for Inquisitor. So uh, instead of doing this here, I could just simply put the dex node in here and then get the one max cold res and one max frenzy. Frenzy is very good because it gives 4% more damage and gives you a little bit of attack speed. Attack speed is good for uh, clearing maps, right? So that's like a more defensive approach. Okay. Um, replaces a 30 dex node. Now remember, you can only have one attribute node. So you really have to kind of figure out which one you want. Okay, uh, replace a 30 dex node with you gain onslaught for four seconds on hit. That's actually like pretty cool, but it does take up the notable, um, but pretty cool. Four max chaos res, or four regular chaos res. This is very strong for sure. I don't think these are expensive at all. So this is very nice as like a filler way to get chaos resistance. Very good. 1% uh, increased effective non-curse auras. The only time I would ever use this is for the uh, Aegis Aurora Melding of the Flesh version that I'm playing now. You get breakpoints on your purity. So if you look at my defenses here, if I were to say remove this 6% aura effect, I actually go down one max res. So the only time I would ever use this is to try to hit max res breakpoints on the Melding of the Flesh setup. Replaces 30 int with Gain Arcane Surge. This is not really important for us. Uh, mana Reservation Efficiency. Mono Reservation Efficiency can also be very good for just like a couple of them. If you need a little bit of reservation because say, maybe on your body armor you rolled 7% instead of 8, and because of that 7%, maybe you have like 13 mana instead of 14 that's needed for like Infernal Cry, right? In a situation like that, getting like a simple Mono Reservation Efficiency can help. Uh, 30 Dex node plus 1 Dex. This is the Fire Trap single target alternative. Uh, replace a 30 strength node with grants one max fire res and one max endurance. This is not bad. Um, only problem I see with this is uh, typically on our on our builds, we want more damage, not more survivability, but not bad. I would actually say this is really good for Chieftain more than anything because Chieftain's one max fire would be one max all. So that's not bad. I don't know if I'd really want to use this with Juggernaut. 2% uh, max life. I can see this being very good for builds that use the... There's a Legion jewel that basically makes all your attributes irrelevant. This is very good for stuff like that because you can tattoo as much as it lets you, right? So this is pretty good. Place a uh, 30 strength that melee hit fortify doesn't matter. Rarity is kind of whatever. All res is okay as well. You know, you need a little bit of res after the melding swap. I don't think there's anything wrong with a little bit of res. Place a 30 int with... This doesn't really matter for us. For all attributes. Another one that's not bad. A lot of the times we have way too much, say, strength before we get into the nitty gritty of like min maxing our tattoos. You can like slap, I don't know, five of these on your strength nodes, convert strength into dex and intelligence, which might save you passive points. And then later when you get better gear, you can remove it. You'll notice a, a big trend with a lot of these tattoos is if you want to be smart with them, you just spend a couple of chaos to fix things. And then you don't have to spend like, say, a divine or two on a new ring. Right? You could slowly kind of work to transition into stuff. Global Defense is honestly pretty good as well. That's 3% uh, armor and 3% energy shield. I don't know how much I care about it though. So definitely interesting. More for the Inquisitor variant, I would say. Strength, I don't think matters too much. And uh, plus one in, this is the one I'm currently using. Okay, next up. Um, one of these actually is pretty good. I'm going to try to remember. I put it in the POB, I believe. Give me one second to pull up one little thing of text. Let's see here. Do I have it anywhere? Ah, oh, yes, I do. 
So, Spirit of Kilova grants you um, 5%. I don't know how to shrink my head. There we go. 5% of life, mana, and energy shield when you block. Lasts 15 seconds. Not very good uptime, but it specifically triggers when you're fighting a unique enemy. So, I could see this being really good for, like, maybe bossing encounters. I'm not too sure on mapping encounters, but also not too bad, right? It's, I mean, it's only one little point. I don't know how expensive this is, though. But this is the Spirit of Kilova. I actually don't know what all of these other ones do. I would have to go look at them. So there's not too much I can really say here. Um, yeah, I'll have to look more at this. Okay. Now, down here, we've got some pretty interesting ones. So let's talk about these here. Replace a small dexterity passive with grants one maximum cold res. Requires maximum one adjacent passive skill allocated. So in a scenario like this, what I could see myself doing is, I think uh, Scrya is actually doing this. You can like come down to the strength node and then grab the dex node, and then you could tattoo this for one max cold res. You're basically spending two points to get one max all. Um, not bad, it's definitely like an okay method. Replace a small node uh, dex to get eight cold. I don't think I'd ever do this because we really value our dex. Uh, avoid being chilled, avoid being frozen. Again, it's on a deck, so this doesn't work for us. Um, Herald buff, I can't say this is really very beneficial for us. Maybe for explode, but I don't think so. Replace a small one to have uh, killing blows of a chance to shatter. I don't think it matters. This doesn't help us. Reduced effective curses is okay, but I think there's better ones for intelligence, personally, which we'll get to. Um, this one requires seven adjacent passive. It's pretty good, but it, I'd only recommend it if you're like dual curse and I don't have all these seven adjacent passive int ones and it's just not that crazy. It's more for like a bossing variant. Uh, three mana per second doesn't help us. Skill effect duration doesn't matter. Minions don't matter. ES recharge doesn't work for us. We don't care about leech. I don't really think we care about this here. Leech doesn't matter. I think avoid bleed doesn't matter too much. Interestingly enough, you could technically slap full avoid bleed on your strength and then swap your minor pantheon. That is an option. I don't know if it's really worth it, but that's an option. Increase life reservation efficiency of skills. You could see if this is worth it on arrogance vitality. You'd have to see maybe that's equivalent to like, I don't know, like a third of a life node. Uh, oops, a daisy. But I, I'm not really too sure on this one. This would only be used in the jug variant. Uh, physical doesn't matter. Fire res is okay. It's it's okay. Nothing crazy. Um, yeah. There's not really much to say about it here. Um, this here, one max fire res, I can see this also being good in the Chieftain variant. Also, again, Jug variants, if you want to grab, like, the Chieftain melding thing, maybe it's pretty good. The only thing is it requires maximum one adjacent passive skill. This is, again, like, kind of one of the tricky ones. So, what I could see people do is people who are doing maybe the, like, Divine Flesh variant... I don't remember if Divine Flesh corrupts here. It might or may not. You could come down here, one, to grab Arsonist, and that's technically a one adjacent. I think that's how that works, right? Um, I could totally be wrong, and maybe it needs to, like, literally... No, I, I think it's just one connected. As long as it's just one connected, I think it works. Requires maximum one adjacent passive skill allocated, so yeah. Another one is uh, down here for Juggernauts, right? We would stop right here to grab Champion of the Cause and stuff. So, depending on the way you path out, this might work. And there could be a couple of others, but I don't think it's the most important to really talk about, right? Um, also depends on the actual price of this. Uh, reduced Ignite Duration, I don't think matters. Explode! Uh, big fan of Explode. Uh, pretty much every single Strength Node on my current Inquisitor is Explode. But this is primarily for just clear speed. If you don't really care about the clear speed, you don't really need the Explode. I, I think it's amazing, right? I mean, I have Explode like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'd like to do this one ten. I just have to see if I have enough strength. Um, flat fire doesn't matter. Totem wipe doesn't matter. Accuracy doesn't matter. I was really excited when this one first came out, but there's no way this is gonna matter because we don't have enough decks. Multi prod doesn't matter. Evasion doesn't matter. Suppression not really. Um, projectile speed not really. Stun threshold not really. Stun duration no. I don't think the guard skills matter. We care more about guard CDR than duration. Um, this is... Eh, not really. I don't think this is that good. Because you would want... Even 10 of these would be 80%. I'm not sure. I mean, maybe if you could stack full, but required maximum one adjacent makes this hard to stack, I would say. 
This one here is actually really good. Only problem is Juggernauts lack Int, but Inquisitor does not. So in the Inquisitor version, I like using this uh, to basically get like full crit immunity, right? So I think right now I'm 70%, but I could definitely slap on more. So I have 70% reduced crit damage taken. That's primarily from the Sanctum of Thought plus <clears throat> some of the tattoos for reduced crit damage. I definitely don't need reservation, so I could actually swap this right now to reduce crit damage. I think I have like a lightning res node that I would like to drop, and I could swap that to a crit damage, so that's honestly pretty good as well. Undervalued here. Uh, armor, I don't think matters too much. Definitely okay, right? especially for like SSF players, it's okay until you get better tattoos. Um, Maim, I don't think matters. CDR doesn't matter. Mark doesn't matter. Hinder doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see here, what else do we have? Avoid stun doesn't... I mean, if you get like a full setup of these, maybe, but it's dex, so there's no way that's actually gonna happen. Uh, flask effect is dex. The rate, yeah, all these are, these are all dex. We can't really use dex. Damage taken recouped is life. Seems okay, but I don't know. W when you think about it, would you rather have 10% damage taken recouped as life, which would be five, or would you rather have 50% reduced crit damage taken? I would absolutely want crit damage taken. Uh, knockback doesn't matter. Chaos doesn't matter. This one is pretty interesting. Requires seven ad adjacent passives for the increased life regen. The only thing with this is it's tricky because this tattoo of the Tukahama wants seven adjacent passives. And there's only so many places for seven. So I think uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is an area, but you'd have to sacrifice one, two, three, four points. And this is okay because it gives some fire trap damage. These don't do anything. Um, down over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one's also okay. These are more for the juggernauts, right? You'd be dropping a point on this and this, which are useless, but Call to Arms is nice quality of life. You're naturally getting the life node and Warcry buff effect would scale your Infernal Cry, so it's all right. There's also one right here. So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can go do a three point jewel, a useless node and a useless node. Um, these are good and you might path up here. Here's another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, this is good. <clears throat> These are both good. This is kind of useless. Uh, this is kind of useless. And uh, you might path that way, that way, etc. I think the last one is like right here. There, there might be a couple as well. I'm, you know, trying to go over as fast as I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is not bad. Again, you might be pathing downward. You might path towards here to grab like Master of Arena. You've got the two-point jewel. This gives you defense on your shield. Maybe you're pathing to the dex node for the max res anyway, and you got unwavering. This seems like one of the better ones for sure. Uh, regenerate life is not bad at all. I actually really like this on the Inquisitor version. If you ever feel like you're lacking sustain or juggernaut, you could just slap on some of your strength nodes into life regen until your gear gets better. Warcry cooldown recovery, also not too bad. I know a lot of people like spamming Infernal Cry. I don't really care for it because there's a map mod that screws over your cooldowns anyway, so I don't like having to pay attention to more map mods. Melee Strike doesn't matter. Fortify doesn't matter. One max Lightning, not too big of a deal. Reduce Effective Shock, also pretty big. Um, I would see this being very much used in like the Juggernaut or the Chieftain version because Inquisitor Tempest Shield feeds into your block cap, which is really good. But those versions like Jug and Chieftain don't really need that. So you think to yourself, you know, I could take a 30 int node, which is the same as 45% reduced effective shock, right? That's kind of cool to think about. I really like this. Um, spell block doesn't matter. Um, block attack, whatever, lightning res is okay. And yeah, so that's pretty much about it. Sorry if the video was a bit hefty. I uh, did my best to try to explain, you know, everything I could. So see you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, I do believe on Monday, we're going to be starting as SSF Righteous Fire Chieftain. I did want to play another character in this league, especially because we've made like so much currency accidentally, but I, I'm just kind of losing a little bit of motivation. So I'm going to do my best after about maybe a month of SSF. Maybe we'll come back to trade league and mess around for like a week or two and then go back to SSF again. Anyway, pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, we already, oh well, yeah, we already pretty much said that. So see you guys all later. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box, except for Sundays. So see you guys all on Monday. Take care, everybody.